right. Welcome back. I am Cold Warpgates. I will be hosting another cast this week. Also, I'll be all about myself this week. This time, uh, we're going to have Group 23 and Group 24 from Week 2 of preseason. Uh, you can see the player names there on the screen. Uh, I'm not doing every single replay. Um, I'm doing four replays from each group. Um, maybe I'll get to the other ones if we have a lot of time left, but we'll see how, what happens there. Uh, as usual, I just want to give a shout out to Site Zero for doing lots of the uh, cast organization work and getting me the replays and all that good stuff. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to uh, people in the CPL staff channel who, or the cast planning channel, I think, who talked about there's a bug. If you click on a, a neutral lurker egg, the game will crash. And all of the games we're going to watch today are going to be on Eclipse, which has several neutral lurker eggs. Uh, so it's a good thing that I was worried about that. Turns out if you change your client to the Asia region, it it's not bugged anymore. I don't know what is up with that, but something I don't have to worry about today. Uh, and with that said, let's get into the game. Oh, well, it forgot how to... Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. All right, small hiccup. I thought Streamlabs wasn't going to find my game. Anyway, here we go. In the bottom left, in the Teal Perdos, it's another two, who I think has been around before, uh, but I can't say with 100% confidence. In the top right, we have the Magenta Terran Mix Mush, who I am much more confident is new this season. Uh, I've said before, we have a lot of new players this season, which is really cool. So, this matchup on this map. Um, now, I've been out of the meta for a little bit, so maybe this is not correct anymore, but uh, when I was playing a lot during last season, the way that it felt was that this was started out as a very good map for Protoss, but if it got too long, uh, it started to get better for Terran. It has to do with the, the difficulty of taking the third, fourth, fifth, and so on bases. Um, I was needed to split the map. Some bases are really hard to uh, destroy, things like that. Uh, so we'll see if that kind of switch happens in this game. Um, now, some Protosses, definitely not me ever, uh, like to take advantage of the two-player nature of this map um, to really mess with the Terran in the early game. There's some very nasty things you can do with uh, stealing gas and proxy and gateways, but I wouldn't know anything about that. Um, but it seems like another two here is just playing the very standard opening here. And everything looks very normal here from Mixed Smush. Looks like we're going to have a gas here on one base. I'm not going to see any kind of very quick barracks or bunker expand. Um, seems like those have not been very popular for a while. You know, this scout here is like a little bit early, I think, from Terran, but not not too wild. Terrans, especially on, on this map, as I was saying, Terrans have a lot of uh, things to worry about from Protoss. Another two scouting after the core. I think if I wasn't going to cheese on this map, I think I would just scout with a goon. But I talk about that a lot. First Marine. Because it's like, what's even the point? Like, the Marine's going to be here to deny the scout. Maybe the probe can get by, but if the Marine's micro correctly, I think you can just kill the probe before it sees very much. The Marine just stands there. Unfortunate. So the probe is going to get a, a read on the Terran base, but I mean, what is there to even look at? I guess you just see there's a gas. Maybe you saw the factory starting. Meanwhile, this kid is about to pop, so... Range has not started yet. Okay, it seems like maybe another two is focusing too much on the probe. Uh, I know I've definitely done that a lot. Uh, hopefully it won't hurt them too bad. This is going to pop out here, clean out this scout. Always feels so much better as a Protoss when you get into that. 
Looks like we might be getting the uh, 23 Nexus or the 2 Dragoon Nexus. It's not 23 anymore because the Scouting Probe died, but uh, I remember this build becoming more popular. I don't know if it has stayed more popular. Um, you know, there's so many like s very slightly different Nexus timings, uh, but who cares about that because we have two factories from a one base Terran. This is a very powerful attack that Terry can do. Let me tell you, it's really ob obnoxious to deal with as Protoss. You really just need to hit everything right. You need to figure it out. You need to get your second gateway, maybe even a third gateway, and just make as many dragoons as you can. Kite the enemy army, keep them all alive. We have a bit of a delay here in goon production. Now, I, I think part of the point of the two goon nexus over the one good nexus is to be better against things like this. So hopefully that will pay off here. Uh, looks like we're keeping one factory without a, a machine shop. I actually don't know if that's normal or not, but I feel like you get it on both and you get three tanks and then you, while your army crosses the map, you start building vultures. I think that's more normal. I also think you can see it later. I think you get mines first. See, I don't like that this goon is going back. It should definitely stay at least here. You know, like you at least want to see when the Terran expands, or when they come down the ramp, that we have some kind of warning. But another two is moving forward with these goons. Uh, I, I I do really like this placement of the observatory. I always forget to do this, but it's really important to block this off to uh, avoid vulture harass. Now, one of the things about this map is these high grounds. Uh, but even with the high ground, three goons here is not enough really important for us to keep as many goons alive as possible. It's it's more important to keep your goons alive than it is to kill things uh, right now. Um, if you can do both, great. But you really want to keep just at this point, just just run away. Don't try to cut. You're just going to take way too much damage. Um, you killed like a couple of SCVs, a couple of breeds, but you lost all your goons. Now we only have one there. We do have three gateways now, but I think that the Journey 2 factory build might just close this out. Oh man, this is the most miserable thing when Terran is building in, in your natural. It just feels awful. Now look, we have an observer to see how awful it is. Now, it sometimes uh, you can survive just by giving up your natural expansion and returning to one base because Terran has set themselves back a lot. I, I, I don't think the Protoss, like the Terran is still ahead in that situation, but it's not game over. But it, it does rely on like doing something cheeky with the shuttle, getting some extreme value. But I would tap out too. I hate playing against this. I hate this this feeling when Terran is just building bases outside your base. Uh, and Mixmush does claim a very quick game one in this group here. real quick. We're going to have Mix Mush versus Chess. Let's get overlay fix. There we go. All right, in the top right. <laughs> Chess, aka Ugh, race, race Switcher, in the Orange Protoss, and the winner of last game, the Purple Terran Mixed Mush. Uh, so, Chess, I know, has been playing in CPL for a while, and I believe they've just changed their race every time. I think they, they want to play random, but they, the CPL gods do not allow it. So, it's, uh, I think previously they've like changed every week or something like that. I think that this, I believe this season they're just sticking with Protoss. So, McSmush went for the two factory build uh, in the first game, and it was the same map and the same matchup. So I'm 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 wondering if they'll they'll do it again here, because uh, it would make sense, right? You just pick a build that's good on this map. Uh, that's what you can do on ladder tournament. I guess tournament like a CPL is different, but it's also preseason. Um, 
So I think it's totally viable. We'll just pick a build. Uh, I definitely did not. I definitely did not just cheese all my PBTs. Um, so we'll have to see if we see that that two factory again. Everything still looks normal here. Again, no like gas steel or, or proxy gateway from chess. So I, I don't know what the CPL rules on this are, but I've always wondered if like, <laughs> you know, like there's there's some Terran players who will pick Protoss versus Terran because they don't want to play TBT. What if you get two of those Terrans against each other? Like one of them, I believe, gets to be the Terran, and one of them is the Protoss. I don't know how, what sort of priority system we go with. Um, but I think it would be funny if if when two Terrans who pick Protoss versus Terran play each other, we make them play PvP. Uh, I think that would be a really good idea. So nothing too distinct about these builds yet. Everything is very standard. Uh, McSmush going for the very powerful Terran wall right here. If Chess was going for some kind of early zealot, it would it has a rough time dealing with this. Because the Marines can get through these gaps and zealots can't. This probe got here a lot faster, I guess? Oh no, this Marine didn't. Okay, probably about the same time, never mind. I thought that was the first Marine over here. So, we are seeing only one factory from McSmush, but leaving three SCVs in gas is kind of a tell. Um, that you are getting a second factory, maybe a starport, that doesn't really ever... Uh, maybe, I think you can only... I think you can leave two guys in gas? Uh, I'm not sure. But, normally, if, the, if Terran is planning to expand after one factory, they will cut down to one guy in gas, because you just, you don't need that much gas. Um... Of course, sometimes the Terran player just forgets to take guys out of gas, but it seems like that's not what's happened here. Uh, so, if Chess kind of knows some of the basics of a Protoss, I don't, again, I don't know how long they've been playing this race, uh, they'll, some alarm bells will start to go off you know, when you see three guys in gas, even after the whole factory is finished. But we have a Nexus here. Uh, so we did get an early zealot. I I actually don't know. I don't think it's very good for for two factory. I think it just because I deleted before it can do very much. Um, honestly, I don't like just getting a safety zealot in this matchup. Like if you're gonna be aggressive with it, then great. Um, but just getting it at like a normal time ish, like after you start the core, I, it doesn't feel very good to me. But I do like that we are being aggressive here to scout with this Dragoon. You really have to see what's happening. Like, if you see... If you see... A more than four Marines, maybe even just four, you should be worried about something. Um, it could be a two-factory or a one-factory push trying to look like a two-factory, a.k.a. the FD, the uh, fake double. Phone's going up. It looks like, oh god, this goon is going to go down. Uh, and that's very sad because now the Protoss uh, is kind of stuck and we're trying to get more gateways, but we can't. We're not getting a goon out of this gateway. Um, sorry, I'm trying. Someone's asking me what kind of ice cream I want. It's hard to focus on that and the game at the same time. Uh, but it's a very scary Terran Forest. Kind of unconventional to get this many vultures this quickly with a two factory, but obviously it works, right? Like, clearly you cannot complain about the results in this game because there are no Protoss units on the map. Uh, super brutal. We smush, knows how to mix smush some Protoss. Uh, I'm trying to get my ice cream order here. 
Uh, anyway, this Nexus is going to go down. Uh, Goons struggling to be warped in. Terran could force their way up this ramp right now, but it looks like they're focused on their deciding to play it safe and just focus on the Nexus. Oh, well, we do have a goon up here with, or a vulture up here with five kills. Looks like kill the goon, maybe a mine was involved. Very sad for Protoss. Uh, now there's a bunker up the ramp. This is just pain, pain town. Gotta have some very sad little probes here. Explode. Yes, I think uh, Chess is getting a very sad ice cream flavor. Like vanilla, but like the flavor's not even mixed right, so it just tastes awful. Just four gateways and nothing. Just a bunker here, ready to poop on them as they come out. Oh, no, yeah, we have like three probes left. I think uh, Chess is just sort of digesting this. Oh god, the goods pop out. Siege tanks splash onto the probes. Disgusting. There you go, Chess taps out. And that's game number two. So, uh, Mix Mush knows how to get it done. Uh, a man after my own heart. Just cheese in the preseason. You're right. NCX Protoss lost two out of two games. Therefore, it's bad. And we need a buff. Alright, this game three, we have uh, Vermin against another two. This time it's going to be a CVP. Oh, debunked! I get it. I like it. I, li I like it. Uh, anyway, uh, in the top right, a new player. We have the Purple Zerg of Vermin. Uh, very uh, appropriate name for that race. And the bottom left, another two. The first player to get smashed by the two factory. See how it goes here. Against the Zerg. Um, so I I think this map just has a higher win rate for Protoss. I'm pretty sure. Like as much as I want to complain. Um, then again, like it might be 50-50, which feels imbalanced for Zerg, because they're used to winning more of the more often, so there. I get to spin it. I, I, I can still balance wipe about it. And given that we're building the pylon and then just leaving immediately, I assume this is going to be a forge expand, uh, which is of course a bit safer and a bit easier to manage than a gateway expand. Still completely viable. And looks like ooh, not an overpool. A nine pool. A nine pool with gas from Vermin. Oh, no, game right. Just a extractor trick. Uh, I don't even know if that's if that's better or not. I have no idea what the math on that is. But it looks cool. So, uh, if another two pay pays more attention to the details than I do in game, they should realize this is not an overpool. She realize this is a nine pool. Uh, that's going to mean that we're going to have six Zerglings pop out here. Uh, all they have to do is get like two cannons before they build the Nexus. And the fact that this probe is down here makes me think that's not what we're going to see. <laughs> um, oh, oh. Come on. No. Mm. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so, this is pretty good. Like, I think that both players comfortable with that. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not really sure who comes out ahead on that. Like both players have kind of delayed their expansion. Um, 
maybe Zerg's feeling better now that Protoss has to pull these probes. I'm not 100% sure that was necessary given that both these cannons are going to finish before the links get here, but I don't blame the guy for that. Yeah, we're looking for one back. The links, they get zapped immediately. I think we're gonna have that third hatch come up right on time. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the gateways here and the forges here. Um, I don't know if there's any extra gaps here because of that. Like, I think maybe the lurker egg helps. Um, I'm not sure, but I know there's some times where if you don't put the gateway and the forge in the right place, even if they aren't touching, weird things happen with the pathway. Uh, by the way, I did mention earlier... Um, it turns out that there is a bug where if you click on this neutral lurker egg, your whole game crashes. And the way to fix it is to change your game client region to Asian. Uh, which apparently also fixes the bug we saw last week with, like, the uh, PC Cafe time being out. And the scroll bug that was really annoying when I was trying to help run Rogue City uh, Turf Wars. So it looks like everything is very normal from these players after the slightly more aggressive than usual opening from Zerg. Oh, I, I, I do like this this move from Vermin to start the lair in the natural just to make it harder for Protoss to scout. Uh, looks like the probe got out there anyway, but that could really mess up a Protoss. Like if you're looking for that lair and you're trying to decide is it a lair or is it three hatch Hydra and you just don't see the lair in the main, you might get a little freaked out and build way too many cannons. Um, and like, th this was more of a consideration in StarCraft 2. I don't know if it's really a big deal in in Brood War, but it can be good to get your lair at your natural because the lair has more health, so it's harder to just snipe the, the base. Um, I haven't really heard anyone say that in Brood Wars, so I don't know if that's really uh, uh, as effective in the same way. I mean, you don't have to like, transfuse the hill your buildings and stuff like that. Where is the Aspire here that we're seeing? Yes, okay. Uh, so it's a little bit different to get four hatcheries before Aspire. I don't know if that's a new build or I'm, I'm just under the build or if Vermin is just winging it here. Uh, my guess is that means we're not going to see a Mutas. Um, if you're going to see Mutas, you're going to see three hatcheries, maybe even two hatcheries, um, and a really fast second gas after the spire starts. We certainly be annoying with Scourge. Yeah, here we go. We do have a Hydrogen. So, we're probably only going to see Scourge out of this spire. Just enough to scare the Corsairs away until there's enough Hydras to deal with them. And another two is going for a very normal plus one push here. Well, I was going to say that. We really have to see the speed start. We don't want to miss that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think we would rather have this second gateway sooner and speed started sooner rather than have this Templar Archive started so soon. Um, there, there are ways to play with a faster archives. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that. Like, we're going to see, like, some DTs come out. That'd be cool. I'd be all for that. Um, but we definitely want to get speeds. There we go. So, this is a little sad. Um, it'll be, I think, like, 30 seconds late. Uh, and the, the, the danger with that is that Zerg gets enough Hydras in that time where the push doesn't do any damage anymore. Uh, it, it really is a very narrow window of time where the plus one plus one push can like make the Zerg take some damage or build way too many Hydras. If they kind of get the time to like drone and and then build Hydras on their own time, uh, the push doesn't really do anything. Looks like we're just going to go out without speed. Uh, I have definitely been here. It feels really bad. <laughs> uh, the speed makes a huge difference, especially versus Hydras. I think the plus one's going to be done. Yeah, the plus one's probably going to be done by the time any fighting happens. 
Um, but yeah, we're dealing with this SimCity and these Hydras in this uh, sunken colony. Like, you, you really want the speed. So I hope that another two doesn't really commit. I hope they just back out here. The Scourge getting a little confused. They do end up getting the Corsair. But there's two left in the air to get this Overlord. And actually, you know what? Even without speed, these Zelts are doing really good. They're getting some drones. They've cleared out all of the defenses. The Sunken Colony is up, but it's going to get focused down by itself. These Hydras are just chilling. There we go. Focusing on these Corsairs. The Sunken does get up, though, and the drones are not getting pulled away. Here we go. Looks like the Zelts decide to fight the Hydras. Their legs do kick in. All the drones get out. Uh, but you know what? This has been pretty decent for Protoss. I think the only thing they're really going to be sad about is losing the Corsairs, but killing a lot of drones, saving some of the Zealots, I think that's, pr that's pretty good. Um, and we're not seeing like a big Muta switch, so the Corsair loss isn't going to punish other two immediately. Uh, you still really like scouting, but we do have one left alive here, just to see what's going on. These Hydras are going to be annoying now, but we do have two Templar. I did not have the production tab up. Maybe I should be doing that. What is that? Oh, no. Here we go. Uh, I'm not sure if we've had Storm. We we could have in the time allotted to us. Alt F. Uh, so these Hydras have done some damage. They've taken out the Forge, which is really annoying. Um, I, I've, I've been told that, like, as soon as you see Hydras are on the map, you need at least three cannons, and, like, four is not that, that bad to do. Um, especially if you lose a bunch of Zealots. Like, it, it's possible if Vermin was really aggressive here, and they were really good at dodging storms, they could kill Protoss. Um, up. Okay, we have the amulet upgrade coming, so I'm sure that we have storm done. Uh, maybe some storms even happened while I was not paying attention. Yeah, it looks like they did. Okay. So it looks like we've had a pause here. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to deal with that as in a replay. Meet Hydras, but I think there's just too much surge. I really want to pull back the Zealots. It's really like, even if this was a good trade, like mathematically for us, which I don't think it is, um, for us, really wants to keep like a big ball of units. Like, if we keep having these small fights where the Protoss army gets reset, uh, that's very good for Zerg. It's like the reverse of a Protoss versus Terran, where it's very easy for Protoss to rebuild their army, but the tanks are really expensive and slow to build. Um, the Protoss really wants to get a big death ball up for the like 12 minute 2-1 uh, push. And like getting that solid mid game, you, know, you can just win the game off that push, and you can set you or you can set yourself up for a good late game. Uh, but you can see that after losing those units, another two is terrified of being busted. They've, actually completely walled themselves in with cannons and this gateway here. Uh, so they're not going to be thinking about pushing out for a little bit. And this is pretty much exactly what Vermin wants. Like, they're getting their fourth base, they're setting up this contain. Uh, surely we must have lurkers coming on the way soon. You can play without lurkers, it's just much harder. Uh, much more demanding on like your storm dodging. Control. Something's dying. What is. Oh no, this gateway is blocking units in. That feels bad. You're like kind of okay with this gateway dying, but that one just. That does not feel good. But at least it lets another two get out of the base. Do we have an observatory? Really need one of those. Okay, we have one coming. Um, you you kind of want to get the robo started by nine minutes and then build the observatory right as soon as it finishes, just to avoid getting destroyed by the fast 
lurker timings as it is. The lurkers were a bit late. Um, but also, I think even if you had observers here, this contain would be really hard to break out of just because we don't have a lot of zealots on the ground. Maybe if we have some godlike storms. But uh, this is getting pretty scary for Protoss here. Like, I, I said... I, as a Protoss player, I, it feels terrible when the Terran is building the bunkers in your base. Uh, this feels just as bad to be contained on two bases while the Zerg is exploding out over the map. So we do we do have another two trying to break out here. Uh, some nice storms, but the Templar are way too far forward. Oh my god, that storm is huge! Some really good storms, but there's just so, so much of an advantage for Zerg here uh, that even with those, like, very good storms. Uh, Zerk does win the fight. And this has been a really fast group so far, which honestly, like, is how I like it. So I'm feeling this. Let's get into game four of four from this group. And it looks like we're going to have chess against Vermin. Uh, so we've had a Protoss player in every game, which again, is exactly what I want. This is perfect. Now, it'd be cool if Protoss won a game. Uh, so maybe I should actually be mad at Scissor for getting me replays where only Protoss lost. Let's see what we have in this game though. We have in the top right again as the yellow Protoss Chess, AKA, ugh, race switcher. And the bottom left, Vermin is the Red Zerg winning last game. Now, are we going to see a return to the Nine Pool? Uh, it wasn't really super effective last game. So, you know, it's not like uh, with McSmush where the two-factor works really well and he, he did it again. Um, we'll see. This probe is staying, so I think we're actually going to see gate expand. Yes, I, I yeah. So normally, if the probe goes back after building the pylon, it's going to come back and build the gateway on ten. Uh, normally, you have the probe mine from the natural. Otherwise, kind of it's kind of pointless to go all the way back. Um, we'll see what happens. And now it yes, it is nine pool again. Uh, so we're seeing players uh, kind of commit to strategies here. You know, they've decided what is good for this map in this matchup, and they're sticking to it. And we're even having an extractor trick on the same timing. This is okay. This is an 11 gateway. Um, sometimes you can do 11 forge, uh, 11 gateway. I don't know. Um, and I can tell you that you absolutely want the gateway to be here and the forge to be here, especially if this player is going for a nine pool. This is gonna be pretty rough uh, it's a lot more down to micro to defend against a ling rush with gateway first than it is with a forge first forge first you just get two cannons you don't have to micro them you just you just leave them there uh, with a zealot first especially with a gateway this late like the gateway is just finishing as these eggs finish okay and we have a nexus here this is very brave from chess um, really, what you, what you want to do is get this, get this zealot out, um, and then you, you have to like block the ramp with probes until the second zealot comes out, and then you can fight the lings. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen this time. We're gonna barely have one zealot when the lings get here. Uh, we have a big choke here. Um, this is just the pain of trying to learn Protoss. Like you just have to learn the walls. Um, and Gateway First has like a really demanding, like, you really have to pay attention to what they're building and know when to get things. Um, you can pretty much only get a Nexus after one Zealot if those are went Hatchery First. Like, even versus Overpool, that, that would be very greedy. But I, as I'm looking at this, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to get proven wrong. Uh, if Ermin doesn't really push the issue and this cannon gets up, Chess will be okay. Okay, here we go. The legs do surround the cannon. 
I, I did, I'm not sure if it got cancelled or destroyed. Uh, we do some damage on our own gateway there. And now, see, this is really obnoxious. I, I think, yeah, I think the Zealot can't get, even get through here to help defend this pylon, so this pylon is being pulled down. Okay, here we go. 28 health on the pylon. Look at how slow this, this these cannons build. It's so painful. But you know what? We we, we had no follow up links. Uh, we just had these two hatcheries go down, and the gas, and a few drones. Uh, is Zerg going to get away with this? I mean, is Chess going to get away with this? I think that might be what we're seeing here. That's amazing. A twenty two HP pylon. So here and now, Chess is the one being aggressive with the 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 only two zealots on the map, and it 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 has forced Zerg to make four more links. So that's two larvae that could have been drones. Uh, there you go, and they didn't lose any of these zealots. Very nice. It's a nice little move there from the Protoss player. This cyber core is finished. We really want to see some kind of tech. Wow, it looks like maybe the gas. Yeah, the gas was late, but there was lots of chaos going on in this game. Um, that could really hurt you if it was a more normal build from Zerg. Uh, Spire would be done like soon, and then Zerg would have a huge window of opportunity to get air superiority. Oh, these salts did go back. I don't know if I like that. Uh, at this point, yeah, there's. I think there's too many links, especially given these Zelts are all split up. And maybe with some sick micro. Maybe, maybe the Zelts can win. Doing a good job, oh, never mind, I forgot to say, doing a good job pulling that one back does not quite make it. Uh, it does at least confirm the third base, I don't think we're going to do any damage here. Looks like Vermin is doing basically the same build as before. Chess trying to go through a normal looking build here. Uh, we do want the Citadel. If you're going to get gateways, you need the Citadel to get speed on the zones. But that's alright. Like Vermin is going to be aggressive anytime soon. Just getting these hatcheries is going to be an Evo Chamber, I bet. Yes. Uh, just gonna, probably just going to get lots of drones. Zelts are being very brave again, scaring away these handful of links. Now, there were definitely more links before. So, some links must have died to cannons. I wasn't paying attention. Chess gets a citadel. You need the speed upgrade for all these zones you're gonna be making. Corsair is able to scout around. Sees the hydrogen. Uh is there no scourge? Okay, we have like the first two scourge ready to pop. So I think this overlord would really should not be killed is gonna be killed. Which is a nice pickup for, for us. But uh, yeah, if you get one, you should definitely bail because it's good coming for you. And Chess does catch it. And in the meantime, we have these zealots moving out, killing some more links, putting on just a little bit more pressure. Now they don't have speed, but there are going to be more of them in past three gateways. And the last game we saw the slow cells do pretty good. See, so, yeah, I like this going for the third. Um, I guess the Corsair was just here, was able to see this kind of SimCity getting ready. SimCity at the third is not quite as strong. It's going to make this attack have that much more potential. 
Uh, and we don't have any units waiting here, so we might, again, we might see the slow zealot push. Uh, I don't think any drones died this time. Uh, it looks like we have one there. Uh, but all the mining is shut down. Hydras are struggling to their time. The Crusaders are running away from Scourge. Looks like I can clean up this one Hydra is trying to dance his way out of that corner. You know, this was uh, kind of decent for Protoss again. A lot of lost mining time. I I think losing the Zealots um, entirely makes it not nearly as good as it was last game, though. We do have a lot of game base. This is very early to have this many game base. I suppose early in terms of tech. Definitely want to get that Robo soon. Uh, we do have Lurker Aspect almost done. That is going to shut down any kind of pure zealot stuff once those Lurkers come out. Finally clearing off the Scouting Overlord. Uh, a very sneaky probe going on the map here. This would be a very quick third for a Protoss, but you know, just, it would just be a gamble. Uh, but, gas is really nice for Protoss. Getting this the du double gas base could be one way to help catch up in the game. Here we go. Gas units are so big for Protoss. All those upgrades. Templar. Reavers. Uh, if this goes unscouted, this base in the top left could be really big. But as I say that, we have two Scourge heading in that direction. We have a large Hydra Ball outside of the Protoss Nationals. Zealots really do not want to commit to this fight. They will all get killed. Just run somewhere, anywhere. Just don't, don't run the top left. Uh, but keep them alive. Try to create some space here. Get some Templar out. Get Storm. Get Observers. Um, I know we saw Lurker Aspect being done. I don't think we've seen any Lurkers. But, uh, if we had a bunch of Lurkers, it would be very, very hard for Chest to do anything on that. You absolutely need Observers and Dragoons to deal with them. And I think this base is going to get away with it. We're getting a gateway here at our hidden base. Very nice. Uh, is it going to matter, though? We do have all these Hydras out here killing a ton of... of Protoss units. There's six Templar. Do they have Storm? Do they have the energy? Some of them have the energy. I think... I believe the research is done by now. Oh, no. They were all right-clicked out. But, oh, my God. The Storms are huge. There's only two cannons, there's no follow-up! Oh no, all the like, I don't think any of them have the mana left for Storm, just barely, and now there's just barely a Zerg army left with some more Hydras on the way. There's a Lurker, but there's no Observers, these canes have to be rebuilt. Moons are running forward into the spines, I'm not sure if they have the range upgrade yet. Oh my god, this is really rough. For Protoss, if Vermin really leads into it and just like pumps the gas on Hydras and Lurkers, like I, it'd be very hard for Zerg to survive. But it looks like the Lurker went down. I think it must have been stormed. Yeah. So Chess trying their hardest to stay in this game. They have this hidden base up. But it's only one probe so far. This big comes is going to take the only payout to save against this push. Another big storm on these clumped hydras. Robo is being built somewhere. So there, there will be observers at some point in this game. But uh, I'm looking at the mini-map. Zerg is not taking a fourth. So if Protoss doesn't die here, they'll be great. If Protoss can be on, on even bases, uh, they're going to feel pretty good. But you also need to have some kind of units on the board. It looks like all these Templar have been cut down to just two. Or, nope, three? Okay. Just this one cannon desperately trying to hold on. So way too brave. Another nice storm out of chess, but still a lot of Zerg. There's a lot of reinforcements 
A lot of idle probes? No. And the fourth base is starting for Zurich Vermin, taking advantage of this contain that he technically has. Uh, Oh, these Templars are so far forward. This is so scary. Sorry. But Berman is not being too aggressive here. Just trying to slowly take out this forage. Not trying to dive into the narrow choke. Sorry, storm dodging that time. Chess really has to get some very good trades to bust out of this contain. Um, but Vermin is doing a good job spreading everything out. You know, not having these lurkers all stacked. We have our observer almost done. Oh, and this base is discovered right as the mining actually starts, and uh, I can't imagine it will live very much longer. I'm sure we're going to have hydras or something sent over there. So, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, is it even worthwhile to get a bunch of defenses at a secret base like this? Like, these extra, these cannons, that's 450 minerals, and it's not going to help, right? Like, this many hydras is going to kill it. Uh, so I don't, like, is it even worth it to defend a secret base? Like, I think most of the time, no. I think most of the time, if it is discovered, it will die. If you build any reasonable one. Like, you know, maybe if you get, like, 30 cannons, it won't die, but you'll have wasted too much money on it. Looks like the Templar stayed alive, but everything else has been ground up here by this contained... Uh, and with the Zerg finding this base, it's looking very dark for Protoss. Do we have any energy restored? Well, there it was. One more storm here, but then what does Protoss do once all the storms are done? The sneaky base is cleared out. Zorg's, Zorg. <laughs> Zorg's fourth base is online. Uh, getting the Queen's Nest, gonna get up to that scary hive tech. Both players are setting up one attack of great, but Zorg's about to get to plus two. Not a nice storm, but. Oh, no, these servers. No! It's gonna be the third one back here. Trying to bust out here, but... Wow, okay, never, you know, these zealots just ran up and killed the lurkers, uh, so that's nice. The problem is just too many hydras. Alright, so these are Archons. Obviously it makes sense to make Archons with Templars that are at our energy. Archons are not going to help you against hydras and lurkers. They are not going to get those units at all. They get... Poke, poke down very quickly. But I like this. These Hydras came up to try to snipe Templar, and they're just starting with Hitler. No, however, as you can see, Archon's not that great. But Chess was kind of stuck into doing that. Uh, and Chess does tap out, and in this entire group, the Protoss loses every game. Uh, so thanks for that, State Zero. With that said, we are going to get into group 2 today, which is going to be group 24. A different cast of players. Alright, the first game is going to be another TVP. Do we have Protoss? Every okay, no, we, we do eventually have games without Protoss. Uh, but the first game is going to be Protoss versus Terran. It's going to be GeForce Tesla against... Rubarks, I'm going to assume is how we pronounce that. Let's 
Let's get into it. All right, in the top right, the green Protoss G4 Tesla, and in the bottom left, the red Terran Rubarks, or just Barks on his CPL registration. Now, are we going to see two factory again? It's a different group, completely different players, but it's the same map and the same matchup. And I think two factory is pretty good for this scenario that we're in. Well, it looks like both of these players were around last season. I remember GeForce Tuzzle, I don't remember Barks, but apparently they were in because they played. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were teammates. I don't really remember. So I'm kind of sad to see no... No gas steel this game, but... That's alright. They're on Rhinodon's Revenge. Dead Blime Seed. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we're going to see, like, the barracks here and then the depot. So I think we're going to see that nice wall again. Keep the Terran safe from early zealots. Protoss kind of has their first pylon and gateway tuck here in the corner and just make their sim city easier later in the game, which I appreciate. players it was the best team he's, he'd ever been on but for Cold War Gates it was just another CPL. Nice. Sending out the probe before the cyber core. Uh, basically I, I just don't like this probe should be way earlier or later. Because it's too early to steal the gas or stop the barracks. It's too late to do that. Uh, but too early to really see any kind of deviation in the Terran build. But I talked about that a lot. Like, it's probably just leaving. This is just... I'm, so, I've never seen the wall, like, at an angle like this. I don't know if it's better or worse. My only thought is that, like, maybe it would mess up the gas pathing. I don't think it is. What is this... Did players just, like, ag agree to, like, leave it each other's bases? Like, they just came in to visit, and then they, they checked out? I'll talk about it now. There's always going to be two Marines there. So that feels bad. Uh, so this... Okay, having this factory all the way back here, behind the wall, I can definitely say it is a mistake. Of course, you know, Terran is busted. They can just fly the command center away. Um, but imagine if they don't, and, like, the tank has to, like, go through the mineral line get that? Okay, here we go. So it looks like this wall was kind of set up just temporarily. Oh, oh. Oh. I thought we were going to have a macro game. But no. We have a proxy factory outside the natural of GeForce Tesla. Uh, looks like Barks is getting a little bit cheesy. And like this is the funny thing about this map. Like, there's big space for you to proxy stuff, and people just don't check. Uh, they just don't think about it. Like, people will check, like, their own third for stuff. They will not check down here, uh, as I'm saying that. So, it looks like these goons are just going out here to poke. Uh, not poking enough to really see what's going on, though. Barks is building this bunker here to fake out his opponent, which is very nice. Like, especially, like, with the depth of this natural, like, <clears throat> to scout from here, uh, I think Protoss would basically have to just lose the Dragoon. Like, they'd have to put the, the Dragoon, like, here to see if the command center is building or not. So this is very smart from Barks. This is me. This, this could be very soul-crushing. Protoss. Now, that being said, I think this bunker is going to go down. The Marines can't decide what they want to do here. We do have a tank. 
Alright, so nothing has been given away just yet with that. Uh, in terms of the Terran build, so the Protoss could still be in the dark. I didn't pay attention to see how many guys they, they saw in gas, but like they were here so early that the probe, the probe really wasn't going to get a good idea of the timing on that. Okay, so these vultures are coming out in immediately to lay mines, and at the same time, a very small push is coming out of the main. Uh, this is very bold from Barks, but I think it's it's going to work off or. It, it, it's going to work out. Um, the natural is basically completely shut down. I think we saw like two goons that are trying to reinforce die. Oh no. This dragoon is stuck. That feels bad. That fe and he has to kill a pylon. It'll probably depower this. Oh no. Here we go again. This is Today's been torture for my Protoss heart. We're going to see a another bunker in the Protoss natural, or even in the Protoss main. Feels bad. It's just laying mines outside of the Protoss production buildings. It's very rude. Yep, this gateway is unpowered. Can these goons even get through here? They must, right? They must be able to get through. The natural goes down. Very sad. Oh, this vulture in these mines scouting enough for the tanks. Start shelling these buildings. There we go, looks like. Jufer Stezzel's done a good job clearing out those mines, keeping those goons alive, making use of the observer very smartly, waiting until the tanks could not see to move those goons. Pretty sick. Oh, never mind, here we go. Terran is busting up the ramp. One of those goons gets deleted. But, uh, you know, the Terran might, you know, Terran might have wanted to, like, leapfrog one of these tanks up a, a little bit more. It looks like Protoss might be able to defend their high ground for now. Uh, well, I say that, and then all the goons die. That feels bad. Oh, my God. It's so rude. Like, you didn't have to build that eBay there, right? Like, you didn't have to build it where the Nexus goes. You could have built that here. You know, like, you... You didn't, like, it, but it's just extra rude to put it where the Nexus goes. <clears throat> we have a shuttle here. I don't know what, like, we, you know, we could get pretty lucky with, like, a, 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 a mine drag here. If this turret had been here, like, a mine drag here, that could be pretty good. Um, but now we have a turret. The gateways are going. Oh, no, we dropped a goon in our own base. Got killed by a mine. We're trying to get DTs, I imagine, but there are already turrets. This is Protoss Hell. I'm paying for my sins right now. So is G4 Tesla. Paying for my sins. This is the third two fact we've seen all night. Very sad. Right, we have a, another PBZ. It's going to be GeForce Tesla, who we just saw against Zoe. All right, in the top right again, and also again in the green Protoss, it's GeForce Tesla. And in the bottom left, in the uh, somewhat off-colored yellow Zerg, it's Zoe from the Red Clan. Now, are we going to see Zelly do that nine pull again? Uh, I mean, that the that Vermin did in the first group. Uh, I don't know. You know, we saw a Terran do this. We saw two different Terrans do the same build in two different groups. Maybe there's just some some kind of uh, shenanigans going on that it wasn't aware of. All right, we should be able to tell if G-Force is going to do Gateway or Forge first. Based on what this probe does after putting down the pylon. If it leaves, yeah, here we go. It's going to be Forge first, is my guess. And we do not have Nightpool. Probably have Overpool, maybe some kind of hatchery first. 
No, I have to. I I think you can cannon rush. Um, I just have to ask that because I know if Nebline was here, he would ask about cannon rush. Even though I think cannon rush is just awful. I do not think it's good in this game. Looks like it is over pull. Uh, maybe like late for over pull. I'm not sure. No, I think this is right. Overpool, of course, is is got the uh, jack of all trades built for Zerg. It can handle anything. It's not necessarily optimal, but just the fact that it can deal with so many so many different things makes it a very popular build, especially for Leonard. There we go. Zerg trying to expand here. Probe getting ready to block. How long are we going to see here? We technically haven't blocked it all yet because the Zerg does not have the money. But the drone's being pulled away. The probe's leading him on an adventure. Here we go. The drone is pulled back. Looks like the entry will go up. Oh, no, no. Looks like we built some links first instead. The probe did not go try to back and try to block. We already have a cannon. Almost done. Ooh, did the probe see? Oh, the probe did not see those eggs hatch. Uh, so, six lings can get past one cannon. Um, so, we, we'll, have, we'll have to see some kind of blocking here uh, to keep that from happening. The thing is, the cannon is done already. The cannon was started before the Nexus. Uh, here we go. So, G First Tesla does have three probes here, which is what you need to block this, but they have to be plays very precisely, and probes are really dumb. They like to coast around a little bit. You have to, like, use an attack on one of the buildings. No, that does not happen. The Lings get past the cannon. Looks like it'll be three of them. Uh, what happened here? Okay, they can't shut the overlord. Now we have three Lings in the main of a Protoss. Very annoying. If they do survive long enough to get speed, it'll be even worse. Trying to get a cannon up. Uh, some decent micro from, from Tesla. Oh, there we go. Well, one does get pulled over. I think this cannon should be further back just to make it easier for probes to drill and, and defend. It's kind of hard to drill and defend at this angle. Uh, and these probes are having a really hard time. Man, I this is this the whole day of cast has been Protoss hell. What a nightmare. But the Nexus is up. That one thing that happens uh, a lot in games is like both players, even if like not a lot of damage is being dealt here, um, they lose focus on, on everything else going on in the game. Uh, for example, we have a third hatchery in the main and a fourth hatchery in the main, or in the natural for Zoe. No gas taken, no third base. So this could just be a way like, oh crap, I should have been spending money while microing those links. Now I gotta spend money. Uh, it could be some kind of link flood build. I, I think you'd still get gas if you're doing that. Um, there are some like there there is a build where you get five hatcheries before you get gas, but you definitely get a third base for that. That build, that build's all about like huge money, huge eco. So maybe this is just maybe we're just gonna make a ton of speed links or uh, a slow links even. Uh, oh no, a Tesla. He's tired of watching his probes do nothing. He sent them back. But they really need to be blocking. If all of these links pile up outside the Protoss Natural and bust it, it would be very sad. Uh, looks like we are getting a gas. We're making drones, so I'm more inclined to think these hatcheries were just like a oops, I forgot to macro kind of thing. Uh, by the way, I should have clicked on those links to see how many kills they got, to see how many probes. Tesla was set back. Uh, I did not do that. For that, I am regretful. We're getting that Stargate. Trying to get back on track. Want to see that plus one start next. Uh, and then the Citadels shortly after, hopefully. Ooh. Okay, so we're going for the two base four hatchery Hydras. Uh, which is a bit goofy, but if it doesn't get scouted, well, 
No, I don't th like, I think, like, if you want to do three hedge hydra, like, the hydras are going to get to the base soon, I think. So, I think this is probably too late to go super all in on it. Um, I mean, if this Protoss doesn't scout it, then hydras are always deadly. We do only have one cannon. Looks like this drone here was trying to take a third base. Okay, here we go. That plus one is started. Do we have the Citadel coming? Yes, very nice. Let's see that speed start as soon as that finishes. Second gateway is very nice. Crusader absolutely needs to go scout. Let's see what the Zerg is doing. They're reading a lair. So these hydras probably aren't all in. Uh, sometimes you can get a lair with a hydra bus. You can like transport units um, into the Protoss main, but we have no overlords. Like so we have one over here. Um, we could maybe get some lurkers back here, but I imagine that oh, Overt isn't long for this world. So we're going to see a, a bunch of Hydras. We, we also see a lair. If we go up here, we'll see a third. So G-Force might be able to figure out what the Zerg player has done here. Now, I don't really know what to do when you, when you see that this has happened. Um... But I think maybe you just don't feel as bad because Zerg is not quite in the place where they want to be. Like, you've been hurt a little bit, uh, but Zerg is not at the optimal position either. Well, this Corsair, if this goes down, it feels very bad for Kratos. Okay, they, they do keep, keep it alive. It is one shot away from dying, so definitely just keep burning. We have, we're going up three cannons, uh, which is a nice response. We don't have to panic and make a, a bunch more just yet. Storm is coming. Speed is coming. I think speed was started a bit late. Well, yeah, you can hit them by 7.30, so it's only late. But, we don't have too many belts anyway. Maybe that push wouldn't have worked. Maybe it's better to focus on the Templar tech. Looks like both players are going to sit back, macro up, and get ready for that mid-game and late game. Oh my god, this is... This is really fast Queen's Nest. Uh, we're gonna see like a really fast hive. That would be interesting. Somewhere we have something dying. I think that overlord flew too close to the sun here. And we have some zealots here. Speed is about to finish. Plus one is done. Plus two is on the way. So we're finally going to see a speed zealot push that actually has speed zealots. Um, of course it is a little bit late. There's plenty of hydras on the field. This time Zoe is being proactive. Uh, compared to some of our other players getting units at the third. So hopefully, G-Force, yep, there we go, sees that they can't get too much damage on their backs off. We have a hive halfway done, 9 minutes and 25 seconds into the game. Uh, this is exciting. I want to see what Zoe is going to do with this fast hive. Uh, we don't have a spire, so it can't, it's probably not going to be like, Guardians. Um, it could just be Cracklings. It could be Ultras. It could be Defilers. I don't know. A bunch of drones. Skate on by the Zealots. Very aggressive to attack with your first two Templar. But a nice storm until the Zealots walk into it. They just kill like half of the Hydras. What can this storm get done? There we go. Some more Hydras get down. This drone is very brave. Uh, so this attack did a lot of damage, but losing these Zealots, and especially losing these Templar, I think is going to set Protoss back more than Zerg's impact. Uh, I have been advised that in normal conditions, uh, you don't want to leave home with your Templar until you have your Um I think we're trying to see why. Like, until you have goons, until you have more units in general, it's just hard to like keep the Hydras off of the Templar, you saw there. You know, you gotta make sure you get, that you have enough energy for a lot of storms. Um, and now, Protoss can't get away with this fast third they're trying to get. So we see this a lot, like, Protoss kinda overextends, lo loses their army, has a hard time rebuilding it, and the Zerg is 
I would guess, going to get the map control and outgrow the uh, upper dot. So this time, so I was taking a very different approach here with uh, Hive into Cracklings uh, very quickly. Now, I, one little nitpick, I think if you are going to get Cracklings, you should get melee attack rather than range. Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. But it is kind of weird to go Hydras into Hive like this. They, there, There is a build that is pretty much obsolete, but still happens because Protoss players don't know how to deal with it, where the Zerg just goes to Hive really fast, gets Cracklings and Defilers, and focuses on uh, upgrades for them. Uh, but now that you've got these Hydras, like, you wasted some gas. A, a wasted is a not spent on this one track to Cracklings. Uh, you kind of want to get upgrades both of them. There we go. Looks like we, once that range attack is finished, we're going back to melee. Which I think is a smart move. Um, but like this army cannot deal with cracklings. You need archons or reavers to deal with it. Like even storm, like you just don't have enough energy to storm all the lings. If Zerg can make a ton of them. We don't have transport, right? For Zerg. No, I think speed just finished. We have Ultra Cavern. So Zerg is just skipping way ahead in the tech tree. Um in a normal PVC, I think, like, Ultras are a unit that will finish the game, but they won't put you in a winning position, if that makes sense. Like, if you're behind and you make Ultras, they will not help you. But if you're ahead and you make them, they will help you kill the Protoss. Uh, so a lot of times they just don't get made in the match at all. They just, they'd rather just do something that gets them in the winning position. Now, somehow Protoss has maneuvered into killing the whole natural it's like all these Dirk were wandering around the map. They were trying to defend this base. Do something up here in the top left. Uh, so once they get here, it's going to be very ugly for Protoss. But they've killed a the hatchery. They kill a bunch of drones. They're getting very good trades here. I think we have something going on in the main. Yeah, we do have Zealots loose in the main. This egg keeping the Zealot out of the mineral line is clutch. It's like some more drones here went down. But overall, I think this attack is going to get wiped out. But... I don't know, is that good? For, is this overall good for Zerg? I, I don't know. What I, what other tech was lost? I don't think there was a tech. I think there was the second hatchery. Maybe the Evo? Yeah, I think that must have been an Evo chamber. Because I only see one upgrade in production. So that that, that could add up. Uh, now we've gotten lurkers. Um, I I don't know if I... Like, I think you should probably stop making hydras. And lurkers once you have hive tech. Unlocked, like... I think it's probably better to just go for cracklings and just, just cracklings. Honestly, like, I don't know if we, I don't know if you even want to throw in ultras yet. Here we have a reinforcing wave of zealots, and actually, there's not that many zerg units. Where does the zerg army keep going? I thought there were way more units. And Zoe leaves the game. I cannot. I am kind of shocked that Protoss won this game. Uh, and it looks like it was played in top versus bottom. So you know we're gonna. We're going to be like, say, zero. Give Zoe the benefit of the doubt. Assume they type GG was just in their team chat rather than all chat. But, uh, wow. I'm really... That's, I'm impressed. And uh, G-Force, in the final Protoss game of the night, picks up the one and only Protoss win. Very nice. So we're going to go into the penultimate game of the night. can believe it it's a game without a protoss we're gonna have barks against nice pants in a tvz yeah i really wanted to see the uh see the ultras come out just to see how we go uh, anyway, in this game, in the Red Terran, we have Barks in the top right, and in the bottom left, in the Navy Zerg, which is still too dark to really comfortably read. It's Nice Pants. Uh, yeah, mediocre. Like I, I see a lot of people say that Ultras are bad versus Protoss, and, like, I think if, like, the game is still even, or if Zerg is behind, they're not good at all. Um, 
but I, I, I really do think they're a very good, like, closer unit. Um, just because, like, they can, like, if the Zerg, if the Prez is trying to defend with, like, one Reaver at each base, the Ultras can tank that. Um, you know, they can take so much damage and let the other units just wipe out whatever is left of the uh, Protoss. Um, Yeah. Uh, anyway, in this game, um, looks like Barks is taking a very early wall here of the natural, and I assume that this means that like maybe we build a command center here or a barracks or something, and we get a tight wall. I I, I assume that a turn player wouldn't do this uh, without it, um, without knowing how this wall is going to work out. Uh, and I'm curious to see if this means that we're going to get. Okay, yeah, I'm sure it'll be like Tipo Tipo barracks. Um, I would assume that this means we're going to get mech. Uh, we're going to get some kind of Goliath build, because I remember that was one of the good things that, like, thing that would make a map good for Goliath build is if you can get a tight wall off at the natural. And I see there's some advice in the, uh... in the chat, and it's Keen saying that Ultras are fine at the CPO level, but they are not used at higher levels because they are not resource efficient. Which, uh, which is fine. Which is probably a more smart way of saying what I was trying to say. Anyway, uh, looks like we have a hatchery first from Zerg, which is very standard in this mandate. Uh, okay, we definitely have gas. So yeah, we're, we're going to get a, a, a command center before we get anything. Yeah, right on 15, once we have scouted that Hatchery first. Uh, I'm still curious to see what the follow-up is going to be. Um, it could just be... It could still be in the bio. I hope we see Goliath Village because it's been a while since, since I've seen that. Now, if... Okay, well, I can tell you it's not going to be Goliath Village because we have a second barracks before the gas. Uh, just in case it happens, I know there 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 are builds where you it's like hybrid by a and Goliath. I don't know if, I don't think it's what we're gonna see. I think we see like the factory and then a bunch of barracks, I think. No 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 it's cool Keen. Uh, I'm glad that somebody here actually knows what they're talking about. Uh, I just know basically I have lost to ultras so I don't want to admit that they're bad. I have to come up with some kind of ex excuse uh, to justify that. So is this um, this is like two and a half hatchery? Like if you get two hatches, get the gas, and then get a hatchery, uh, it, which obviously, as it sounds, is in between two and three hatch muta, or whatever else you're getting with the uh, with the hatchery. Kind of curious to see how this works out from from nice pants. Now it is basically the default. That Zerg is going for me to. Ooh, I wonder if that lets links through. Very curious. Like, can you mineral walk? Yeah, you can mineral walk through an egg, so I wonder if this only lets you through your mineral walking. Nice. Uh, anyway, so it's normal for Zerg to give me this, and by normal, I mean like 99% of games. But uh, we see this a lot in CPL. People just skip this fire and go straight to lurkers, um, which can either be like a cheese to try to end the game or to just. Uh, more eco and just try to be defensive rather than harass the Terran to death. Uh, given that the Hydro Den is not started yet, I assume we're still going to see Muta. Uh, and I wonder if Terran is aware of the two and a half hatch Muta thing. I, was there? I don't. Was there an SCV scouting earlier? I really. I think I've just blacked out the rest of this game. Uh, maybe. They, maybe. Maybe we saw that. Um, I'm just a little bit. I like. I, I don't know what to do. Like against a two hatch muta, you go for a two barracks academy just to get some marines out earlier. And against a three hatchery, you go like, uh, what is it? Like five barracks plus one, which is really like one barracks plus one, and then you add four bar barracks at the last moment, so you have a bigger ball of marines, but at a later time. Uh, so I don't know if you just pick. It looks like we've gone two racks academy here. As we have a, uh, actually not that big of a bio ball coming out 
from Barks, but it has forced four sunkens, which is not bad at all. Uh, and the Spire is, you know, only like two, two thirds of the way done. Uh, we have a mediocre who uh, has a bit of a record against Barks. Good to do research. Uh, so we're going up to four barracks before a factory? This is not what I see normally, but I don't know if it's good or bad because I'm a, I am a Protoss player. Uh, I do like the Terran is just backing up. Well, I, I like the Terran isn't just diving into the second colonies. Um, couldn't tell you if leaving is good or bad. Maybe it's better to leave, uh, to stay and keep pressure on. But also maybe you want to pull back before Zerg can overwhelm you. Uh, and so we see the Spire. But no Scourge or Mutus. Uh, well, okay, you wouldn't see Scourge yet. Uh, no, oh, here we go. Okay, look, I'm I'm just... I know, like, two sentences about this matchup, alright? I'm confused now, because we had Spire into Hydra and Lurker Aspect into then getting a Mutus. So... Uh, I don't know how this is going to work out. I, I, I almost feel like Ice fans should just drop the Spire and just go straight for the, uh, the Lurkers. Um, or... Yeah, yeah. We'll see, because like, we're, like, we're, we're going to have these seven mutas, but like, I don't think that's enough to fight this, these many marines. Oh, but if the links get past escorting a drone, like these links could get into the natural and cause lots of pain, but I think they're actually just escorting this drone. Uh, which I don't know if that, that's a good call or not, because I feel like the space is going to get up regardless of, of how many Zerg units. Like, regardless of... How many links are there? Like, if Terran saw this, these links would not help defend the base. Maybe he had, like, Lurker there. So, Terran is checking the normal third base of Zerg and does kill it. It looks like Nice Pants is going to take this hidden base now and move to threaten the natural. And the wall is open. The bunker is just now starting. This is pretty scary. Uh, there are three turrets here, but with all these links, uh, this natural is definitely in bad shape. We have the Terran army down here on the mini map, thinking about what it's going to do. But I think they... Oh, looks like they're, 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 they're going to come back. Uh, I don't know if they could take these Sunkins or not, but I think coming back is not is not going to save the base in time. Um, like, basically this is only good for Zerg, right? So maybe if Terran attacks the natural, they can trade bases um, and get in here before all these these lurkers pop, but like basically, Terran is just going to take a tremendous amount of damage. Like, we have two SCVs left in the natural. Uh, the main SCVs are under attack. It looks like the Mutas might actually get taken out, which is not a small accomplishment. I, th I think we had seven Mutas earlier, and they must have been taken down by turrets and some of these Marines. Uh, so, if all of the Mutas stayed alive, that would be absolutely be like a huge victory for uh, Given that they're dying to this turret here, uh, it's not quite as good. So Zerg is still up on workers after that attack, which is really good for Zerg. But losing the Mutas is hard to reset. Uh, I mean, basically Zergs just don't reset it once they lose them. Especially now we have these starboards almost done, and vessels soon to be there. So we have these completely naked lurkers, but they managed to get very nice hits off on the bio. We do have scanners, but with this many lurkers, your bio micro to be very precise to avoid taking huge casualties here. So, losing those Mutas was rough, but given that we have this big Lurker contained out for Zerg, uh, it seems pretty good. And they have this third base coming up with the gas. Uh, and we're, so, we don't have any tanks from Terran to deal with these Lurkers. We're going to have two port vessel. Um, it's going to take a little bit to get the vessels, to research radiate, to get the energy for a radiate. So, these, this Lurker contained is going to last for like at least another minute, maybe like two minutes. Uh, so we know they made changes, and we're just going to add more more Lurkers. Uh, so, that, you know, at some point we're going to have too many Lurkers to irradiate. Uh, so Barks is really locked in here until they can do something major. And this is basically a Zerg's dream. Uh, just complete freedom to do what they want in the map. The Hive is done. 
We've got some Scourge coming out to help deal with those vessels. Uh, super, yep, yeah, it's Twilight Mount somewhere. Here it is. Uh, and, like, if the contain can stay up long enough for Zerg to get to Twilight's Wizard to zoom out, that is kind of just like a, a checkmate. Oh, it wasn't Double Vessel, it was Double Dropship. Uh, looks like Mediocre was paying more attention to what's coming on the starboards than I, I was. Uh, okay, this is the kind of play that Barks needs to make here. Um, it's not guaranteed to win by any means, but this is like what is it, this is what can change the game. We, we saw some Scourge. Uh, looks like we have three, just enough to kill one of the dropships. Anyway, we have two over here. Okay, we have, we have a bunch of Scourge, and I'm pretty sure they're going to see the, the dropships, even if they don't know where they are right now. Um, so, of course, these dropships could just fly into Scourge and die, and it would be very sad. They could also kill the whole main and kill all the tech, uh, because there's not very much on the ground at home from Zerg. Oh, man. Dropships. Drop. No. All right, so a uh, total of three bio units get dropped. You can see how bad Hydras are at killing bio, because they basically did nothing there. But overall, I think that was very sad for Terran. Do I get... Overlord, though. Nope, he's away. We do have vessels out. Not enough energy for a irradiate, and there's so many lurkers that, like, it'll take forever to radiate is your only way to deal with them. We have another base here coming up the top left. We need that double gas, which is uh, pretty much Terran's nightmare. So we can make such good use of gas in these matchup with the Filers and Ultras. Like, it's so scary. Well, speaking of Ultras, here we go. Uh, I think we might have more Ultras than Links on the map right now. We got two and two. Okay, so it's tied. Oh, what kind of upgrades do we have? We have no upgrades for the Ultras at all. Uh, that's got to get fixed. I think maybe the speed is done. But... In the meantime, we do have plus one attack for the Terran. Uh, just not getting range. I think you definitely want that earlier. Uh, plus two attack coming. God, this lurker contain is just brutal. Like, I I think you just have to get tanks. Like, you have to get like one factory, one star for it. Uh, because otherwise, like, you just will not clear these lurkers out in any reasonable amount of time. And now we have Dark Swarm in the Terran Natural. Uh, kind of one of the victory conditions of Zerg. Because as you can see, it's, uh, it's fucking... <laughs> oh my god. So, so many Marines dying. And now, once you have this cloud, yeah, you can just keep putting clouds down. And Parks taps out. And Nice Pants wins the game. Mediocre gets some knowledge on how to beat Barks in this matchup. Uh, I appreciate that Nice Pants is staying in this game for like 10 seconds just to kill stuff. Uh, it feels good when you win a sick game like that. Alright, and that is going to bring us to the last game of the night. This has been a quick cast. I love it. I love getting through games. As much as we all like TVT, you know, I, I don't want to sit there for like 45 minutes watching tanks shoot each other. Uh, and speaking of quick games, uh, our next game is a ZVZ. It's going to be Zoe from earlier against Nice Pants. And it looks like Brutori is bugged. I can't create the lobby. There we go. Okay, I had to change the lobby name because, you know, small indie company. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> these colors. These colors! Okay, good, good. Uh, in the top right, in the now red Zerg, it's Zoe from Rev. And in the bottom left... Uh, hold on. Wait. In the bottom left, in the blue Zerg, it's Nice Pants EU. Uh, now, I just want to say, uh, as casters, we always appreciate it when people host their games in the top versus bottom mode. Excuse me, uh, because that lets me switch the colors to red and blue. If it was melee mode, they would both become yellow, which would not really fix the problem that I have with these colors. So, 
big shout out to them, to Zoe and or Nice Pants. But anyway, talk about the actual game here. Uh, ZVZ, of course, is infamous for being the shortest matchup by far. Uh, you pretty much get to nine drones and then make links and mutas for, for the rest of the game in some combination. Uh, looks like both players are going for relative. Oh, no, no, okay, so Zoe is going to get nine pool. Nice Pants is getting an overlord before pool. So will that translate into just an overpool? Uh, wait, ooh. Is Nice Pants getting a nine hatchery? I mean, we're, or is Zoe getting a nine hatchery? Okay. So that is a spicy build over there. Uh, nice Pants, I think, is going to get like a 12 hatch. Uh, maybe a 12 pool. So this is not a macro build to get a hatchery this early, especially in your mate. This is a Ling Flood build. This is just like, we're gonna see a spawning pool as soon as possible, like very soon. Um, and then we're gonna see six larva turn into links and they're gonna attack um, with, you know, with constant reinforcements. Now it looks like Nice Pants did go for a 12 pool, maybe 11 or 13, whatever number. Yeah, it's like 12. Um, So I actually don't know how that lines up. Um, I feel confident in saying that a 12 pool would be able to defend a nine pool because if it wasn't, I don't know why else you would ever go with this build. Uh, I don't know what, it, I have no idea what it goes against a nine hatch with speed. Okay, this is gonna be a very aggressive build from Zoe. Okay, and now that we're getting this second hatch relatively late and in a less or later than Zoe, and in a much less defensible position, I feel much more confident for Zoe. But, you know, again, I'm, I'm not a Zoe player. Um, wait. What? An Evo Chamber? I mean, I guess if you, you know, if you could have an attack or armor upgrade in an even link fight, that would obviously be fantastic. Is it worth the time and money to get one? I don't think so, given that I've never seen anyone else do this. But I'm down for it. It seems sick. Uh, I just feel like it's going to delay the push too long. Because uh, I feel like the game is going to be decided when the first push happens. So like, if you delay that, then Nice Pants is going to have time to take advantage of their better eco. Um, and if you don't delay the push, then you've gotten this upgrade for nothing. And we've, I think we've started the upgrade before speed. So I guess we are just going to go with a massive amount of plus one links. I don't think that, I like, I don't think Nice Pants knows what's going on. They just know some kind of one base build, but it could be like Nine Pool Air. Um, I guess, I don't, something like that, right? <laughs> some kind of build where you try to get fa fast mutas. Like, we have more links for, um, for Nice Pants. Oh, here we go. So Nice Pants definitely knows, okay, with, with two hatcheries and an Evo, like, you have to know what's coming, right? I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but you can kind of do the math on these five buildings and see what's coming up. So we do have more links. Looks like either Nice Pants is going to try to just take a nice position at the bottom of the ramp, or try to force their way in before Zoe is really built up. I, I think I would prefer just taking a position at the ramp. The lair is done. I assume we're going to see Spire. Right. So if Knight's Pants can, can hold on, um, they're going to win. Like, if they get Mutus, and they get him in a good enough number, like, eventually they'll come up with things, right? Probably the police don't come in at the last possible moment, killed the drones. Uh, looks like Nice Pants is trying to force their way up the ramp and actually doing a really, it seems like very good trades here. Uh, Zoe's having a hard time keeping their lings in an arc, kind of just trying to force them down the ramp. And uh, this is pretty good for Zoe, I think, to reset this link count like before the attack. Upgrade finishes, like, uh, that seems like a very good trade. And this, I think this is going to buy time for these mutas to come out, right? Question mark? 
Um, especially to come out and kill some drugs. Right? That's pretty good. Uh, looks like no, it's like a pop. Time. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there is a name for this build. Um, the, the the speed was late because it was started after the plus one. Because I guess we're just waiting for the plus one. And there's no point in delaying it to get the speed. Um, I feel like maybe I've heard of this. It, maybe I've heard of this build as something that happened like a a long time ago. I mean, there there could be a window before mutas are out, but it's gonna be a very narrow window. It'll be like. Ling's attacking while the mutas are hatching, and especially like with this very nice control here from Nice Pants picking off these whole position lings, like this is absolutely savaging Zoe's plants here. Like, okay, we do finally have a, a plus one done. For, well, come on, come on, finish, finish, finish. There we go, it's finally done. Uh, Zoe's lings are gonna have a 20% damage buff over the blue links is it enough I, I have like has nice pants traded well enough uh this, this creep colony probably you know probably could have been built a few seconds earlier uh the mutas are out but this small number of mutas is not going to kill links very fast uh so if so we can get bunched up here how did they get split in two how did this pack of link get split in two i don't know uh the natural is kind of forfeit here but that might be a good trade for Ice Pants to take. They've gotten a sunk up in the main. They're starting to pick away at these links with Mutas. Yeah, I, I I feel like if we had these links more grouped up and they hadn't lost so much on the ramp, this attack would be pretty right now. I mean... Ice Pants is down to five drones. Uh, five to eight, so... And these Mutas are not going to be attacking an opponent at any... You know, anytime soon, trying to hold off these links. There we go. Wisely pulling back, trying to group up rather than uh, send in small waves at a time. Um, you know, we've already got an Evo Chamber if we, if we want to make spores. Uh, but I have a feeling that Zoe would rather just keep the mutas away by at at attacking with links. We even had this third hatchery that I've been clicking on here. Mailings as possible. And only two meters, but I threw one on the way. Uh, we probably need an Evo, I, I, I think. Yeah, we probably just need one Evo. Like, you've already killed a bunch of drones. I think you can afford to take the hit to your money. Like, just put like an Evo here, maybe, maybe here to cover the spawning pool. I'm not sure. Uh, we definitely need to attack with links. We can't just have our links here get picked off. All right, so the Mutas have made it to the drones. It's pretty much put a very short clock on this game. Now, of course, this many links can kill drones and buildings much faster than two Mutas, but this play has to work now, or Zoe will be knocked out of the game. All right, the links have completely conga lined on the way over. Very unfortunate. There might still just be too many here. Yes, I think there actually are too many links. No, you don't care about this. Go kill the dr this sunk in the drones. All of the drones for Zoe are dead, and now I actually have no idea who wins. Because maybe so I feel like now if the mutas come back to the main and kill all the links, they win. Like there's you know, if both players just were only attacking buildings, I'm sure that Zoe would. But if the Mutas come kill the Lings, I think they. Nice Man has a chance. And it looks like that's. Well, we've. No, no, no. The Mutas are staying here, not even focus firing, so this is going to take a million years. Uh, and these plus one Lings are chewing through these buildings, so Ling, the Mutas cannot kill them that quickly. But this is all of the Lings that are left. Oop, nope. This is all of the Lings that are left. Actually, I think. Yep, I think the Mutas are, are, are going to do it. So he taps out. What a game. I have never seen a ZBZ quite like that one. Uh, I I think if Zoe could go back in time, all they would have to do is put their links in an arc at the top of the ramp, and then they wouldn't lose. They lost like 10 or 15 links in fights on the ramp. If they kept that alive, they would absolutely crush it on the first wave. Uh, that being said, 
Nice pants to take our game there. And that is the last game for tonight. It feels really good to get those all those games out of the way. Um, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, I am committing to doing one of these casts every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, possibly doing other casts, sometimes with the match of the week. Uh, I know this week, Saturday, I'm going to be on the official CPL stream at 1 p.m. for the coach show match. Um, so if you like seeing that, go ahead and give me a follow. Uh, and I'm going to find someone else streaming StarCraft to host real quick. I should have had this set up before I got to the end of the cast. We'll do Hazel and Alright guys, thank you for watching. Have a good one.